people would want him. Rosie and Robbie are dying to sell you a lobster ticket. You know? So when I text Jeff Sanchez yesterday, Jeff, is it a true story? I go, Jeff, you, you're going to come by, right? He goes, can I get a lobster? So you know I don't play favorites. So I was like, you get all the lobsters you buy. I'll make sure that you get every lobster you pay for. There you go. <laughs> People don't know that Jeff is my cousin. No, really? I don't know if we're cousins, but his mom's last name is Arroyo. Uh. So I call all of his donors and I say, my cousin Jeff Sanchez asked me to give him a call. Yeah, and I said, I said, Jeff's all set. You don't have to give it to him. Whatever you're going to give him, he says, give to me. I just want to say also, too, when he says I was running scared, it's because there's a rule in politics. There are two ways to run for re-election. Scared or unopposed. That's it. My good friend Salamatina picked unopposed. <laughs> so he's over there in shorts, slippers, sunglasses. That's what unopposed looks like. This is what scared looks like. Did you talk to me today? Was I completely out of it when I was talking to you? <laughs> Did I a little bit? <laughs> That's just scared. I'd rather be like him, but these at-large races don't let you do that. No. All right, seriously, folks, I appreciate you being here, taking your time to be here, uh, finding a way to find McBride Street in Jamaica Plain, you know, hopefully having a good time. Uh, but I hope you also feel good about where your money's going. And let me tell you where your money's going. It's going to a campaign that believes that we can and we will build a better Boston. It's going to a campaign that believes we're going to do that through collaborative politics. I might be a city council now. It's the first time in a long time I'm not wearing a suit, which is nice. You know, but I might be a city council now, but I'm still an organizer. I still believe that everyday people, when they come together, do, can do exceptional things. That's how we save libraries. That's how we played a role in selling the firefighters situation. That's how we help restore thousands upon thousands of summer jobs this year. I have to say we. I can't say me, because I didn't do it alone. I did it by working with people in the community who care about those issues and letting them know that yes, I believe in a government that governs with you and not over you. And so help me do my job by telling me what matters in your community, by giving me the solutions and allow me to play my role as your elected official, which is to listen to the community and help implement the work that they need. You know, you may out there read that uh, I'm union's preferred candidate. If you didn't believe that, you're sitting at a table that was lent to me by firefighters. You know, there's the other tables that lent to me by the painters, and every table here has got a Boston Public School teacher on it. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> but it has nothing to do with political experience here, what you may or may not believe about unions. It has everything to do with the fact that I believe that we have the right, as working people, to go to a job where we're treated with respect and dignity, get paid enough to take care of our families, and have enough time in our lives to actually spend time with our families. And I believe, yeah, you can clap for that little one. That's awesome. Brooke is the only one who agrees with me, and she's like two. So that's who we are, and that's what we're about. I don't want to dominate this microphone. My uh, communications director, Heather Perez, told me I tend to talk too much. You do. Oh. 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 Right, you can heckle me if you write fines on all checks like Steve, you see it? <laughs> He said he doesn't want to eat lobster, he just wants to yell at me. <laughs> um, and so I'll just wrap that up by saying thank you and by making something very clear. There are seven people running for four seats. You don't need a Boston Public School teacher to tell you it means three people are not winning. That's right. All right? There are seven people running for four seats. I think we can win. I know we can win. But it isn't going to happen without you. You're here. You support me, and I appreciate that. You gave some money that helps us get our work done. When he said it costs money, it's a citywide race. <coughs> to do one citywide mail, it can cost up to $50,000. Just wow. one in your mailbox. You don't turn the vote on one. You need to hit them two or three or four times. It's a citywide race. i got to get votes everywhere in this city. And so I know that I'm talking to the choir at some level. I don't mean to take you for granted. But I know most of you are here because you do support the work we've been doing. It's not that I'm taking for granted, I'm just acknowledging what's before me. But let me tell you, when, tell you what happens when you're talking to the choir. 
It's the choir that helps bring more believers into the church. It's the choir that helps deliver that word. It's the choir that tells a neighbor what's so important about this election. Why does this election matter? How they can be helpful if they believe it matters. It's a choir that help involve everyone, in their friends, their family, their cousins, their sisters. Now I got cousins I didn't even know, like Jeff. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna call Jeff on election day and make sure he goes to vote. <laughs> and so that's what I need your help with. So think through how can you help me out? How can you help this race happen? If you gave money, can you give again? I'm not ashamed to ask you for it because I don't have downtown with me. I don't have big businesses with me. And one of the things I'm trying to do is move where our money's invested in our city. We have over a billion dollars that we invest in big national banks who give nothing back to our neighborhoods. And so I'm saying, whoa, stop that. Let's invest taxpayer money in the banks that give back to the city of Boston. I know that's the right idea and the right thing to do. But those big, powerful bankers, they don't like me. They don't like that idea. They're not helping me win this race. You help me win this race. So first I want to say whether you gave the maximum of $500 or if you gave anywhere below that, the nice thing about this state is there's a maximum of five, but there's no law about how the minimum. You gave it to me. I understand the economic times we're living in. I understand that you made a decision to give a donation to this campaign when you could have used it for something else in your life that you need. I appreciate you. I hope you never regret that investment. And I hope to always make you proud as your city council in the way that we use that money to make sure that our values continue to be represented in this city. And if you think you can give more, I'm asking you to. And it's the only way that we're gonna win this race is if we own this campaign. Nobody else is coming. I believe in the power of people over the power of money. And what that means is that I believe a lot of people giving something will allow us to compete with those who get a few people to give them a lot. That's who you are, that's the choir. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And to let you know how, how good we feel about the, power, the ability of winning this race, particularly because of your help and your support. See that place right there? Yeah. That's where our election victory party is going to be. Oh! <laughs> James, James Gates! Oh. I'm driving to a victory party. I am not driving to a thank you party. <laughs> All right? Hey. I'm driving to a, I'm not driving to a we almost did it party. <laughs> All right, we're driving to a victory party with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of that. I'm gonna pass the microphone back to, to my good friend Kelly. Uh, but while she acknowledged my father, I wanna acknowledge my father, um, who I caught going up for seconds without an extra ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna know who's sleeping at the wheel at the serve table over here. Um, you know, I own awful, an awful lot to my father. Many of you know him as a politician. You know, as, a, as the city councilor who was there before me with the same name. But he was always dad to me. And I was lucky to have him growing up as a son. And, and I wish that every child in this city had a father like me. So I love you, Dad. I want to close this out by saying one of the reasons I've given my time and money to this campaign.